Hello everyone. So today we are starting with the next topic that is lesson number 9 optics and in today's lecture we are going to see the solutions to all the problems in Maharashtra State new 11th standard textbook. So let us start with the first question. The first question is a monochromatic ray of light strikes the water surface in a cylindrical vessel at an angle of incidence 53 degree. The depth of the water is 36 centimeter and after striking the water surface how long will the light take to reach the bottom now let us draw the figure first this is a cylindrical vessel and in this cylindrical vessel water is filled and the depth of the vessel is given as 36 centimeters this is the depth of the vessel now ray of light strikes the water surface at angle of incidence 53 degree so light is incident at an angle of incidence 53 degree and after incidence since it is traveling from air to water it will bend towards normal as it is traveling from rarer medium which is air in this case to denser medium which is water so the light the ray of light will bend towards normal and then after bending towards normal it will hit the bottom of the surface so the question is how long will the light take to reach the bottom so basically the question is what is the time taken by the light to reach this point a let us say to this point that is b in this figure if this is angle of incidence then this angle is called as angle of refraction r so the question is what is the time taken to reach from a to b that is the question so since we know that speed distance time the formula is speed equals to distance traveled upon time taken so using this formula i can find time as distance traveled upon the speed at which the light travels so what is the value of distance the distance is distance a b distance a b and the speed the speed that i have to consider is the speed of light in water in the second medium so upon cw speed in water now in this case we don't know what is the value of a b as well as we don't know what is the speed of light in water so for that i will solve them separately and then finally put it in this formula so let us see since this angle of incidence first i will find angle of refraction using snell's law and what is snell's law refractive index of water with respect to air is sine of angle in air that is 53 upon sine of angle of refraction in water which is what we are going to find this is 4 by 3 given refractive index is given 4 by 3 what is sine of angle of incidence it is 53 sine 53 upon sine r now this angle 53 degree is a famous right angle triangle that is 3 4 5 in this right angle triangle this is the smallest Pythagoras triplet 3 4 5 in which the side opposite to 3 angle opposite to 3 sides of length 3 centimeters is 37 degree the angle opposite to 4 is 53 degree whereas hypotenuse is opposite to 90 degree so in this case what will be sine of 53 degree sine of 53 degree will be opposite side that is 4 upon hypotenuse that is 4 by 5 so if i replace the value of sine 53 which is 4 upon 5 Clearly 4 and 4 will cancel and on cross multiplying 3 will go up. This is 4 by 3. So 3 will go up. So sin r will be equal to 3 by 5. And from this particular figure, you can easily calculate what is 3 by 5. 3 by 5 is sine of 37. So it should be r should be equal to 37 degrees. So this angle we get as 37 degree. Angle of refraction is 37 degree. Now, we are interested in distance AB. Since we know that this distance is 36, that is the adjacent side we know. If we know the adjacent side, yes, you can find the hypotenuse. Which ratio you have to use? We will use the cos, cos ratio, that is cosine ratio. Cos 37 is equal to adjacent side, which is 36, upon hypotenuse, which is AB in this case. And cross multiplying this, AB will be equal to 36 centimeters upon 36 centimeters upon cos 37 which from this figure is 
cos 37 is 4 by 5. So 36 upon 4 by 5. Solving this, 4 9s are 36 and 5 9s are 45 centimeters is the value of AB that we get. This is the first thing that is required in calculating the time. So once you get AB, now only we are left with the speed. For that, again, we will use the second version of Snell's law. Snell's law also states that speed of light in water upon speed speed of light sorry refractive index of water with respect to air is also equal to speed of light in air upon speed of light in water since we know speed of light in air is 3 times 10 to the power 8 meters per second speed in water can be calculated on cross multiplying so this is given as 4 upon 3 on cross multiplying 3 3s are 9 and 4 will go down so from this you can calculate speed speed in water as this will go up it will become 9 by 4 into 10 raised to 8 meters per second so once you get cw and ab this is in centimeters this is in si units meters per second i simply need to put the values over here so if you put the values time will be equal to what is ab 45 centimeters 45 times 10 to the power minus 2 since this is centi upon 9 by 4 times 10 to the power 8 and solving this 9 5 is a 45 if this 4 goes up it becomes 20 it becomes 4 5 is a 20 times 10 to the power minus 10 so which I can write it as 2 if 1 0 is cancelled nanosecond 2 nanosecond is the answer question number 2 Estimate the number of images produced if a tiny object is kept between two plane mirrors inclined at angle 35 degree, 36 degree, 40 degree and 45 degree. So to solve this question, you must know uh, what how to find number of images between two inclined mirrors. So let us take example. You must know this. If there are two mirrors, this is first mirror, mirror M1 and this is second mirror that is mirror M2 and if these two mirrors are making angle theta with each other and if any object a very small tiny object is placed between these two mirrors now there are two ways either I can place the object a very small object a tiny object symmetrically symmetrically means if I place the object over here such that it is making equal angles with both the mirrors it is on the angle bisector we call it as if the object if the object is on angle bisector in such cases how to find number of images and if the object is not placed on the angle bisector that is if it is not placed symmetrically if it is placed somewhere over here then clearly the angle made with the first mirror will be more than the angle made with the second mirror so there are two two cases if the object is placed on AB, that is on angle bisector, that is symmetrically, or if the object is placed off angle bisector, that is asymmetrically. So for that, I'll just draw a table. First step, what you have to do is, if two mirrors are making angle theta with each other, the first thing that we do is we find the N. What is this N? N is a number that is 360, that is obtained by dividing 360 by this angle theta. That is, if two mirrors are at 60 degree, n will be equal to 6. If two mirrors are at 120 degree, n will be equal to 3. If two mirrors are at 90 degree, 360 upon 90 is 4. So this is how you get n. Yes, n could be even. n could be even. It could be odd. It could be even. It could be odd. When it will be even, for example, 60 degree, if two mirrors are at 60 degree, if you divide 360 by 60, you get an even number. You can also get it as odd number. When two mirrors are making 120 degree, then 360 by 120 is 3. So it is odd number. In some cases, the angle could be such that it is not a perfect divisible. So for example, if two mirrors are making 50 degree, then 360 divided by 50, you won't get a perfect number. So in that case, we will call it as a decimal. In decimals so these are three possibilities first second and third in these three possibilities how to deal how to find number of images 
see first if the value of n if you get even i'll get, give you example example theta equals to 60 degree you'll get n equals to 6 which is even irrespective where you are placing the object place object anywhere that is on or off AB angle bisector on angle bisector or off angle bisector place object anywhere you will get number of images one less than this n that is 5 that is n minus 1 number of images will always be less than 1 now the theory behind this is explained in the regular theory lectures why this happens what is the logic behind this right now we are just looking how to solve the question second if n is odd if n is odd let us take example example i theta equals to 120 degree if i divide 360 by 120 you will get 3 n equals to 3 which is odd now for this odd you have to consider two different cases object on ab and object off ab think logically if the object is placed on angle bisector the final image because of this mirror and final image because of this mirror both the mirror and the final image will be coincident so one less image is going to form so number of images will still remain n minus 1 but if it is odd and if it is object is off angle bisector somewhere else in, the, in that case number of images simply remains n and last case if the the division is decimal not a perfect number in that case what you have to do is place object anywhere you always get only the decimal part for example if theta is 50 50 degree then if i divide 360 by 50 what is the value of n n will be 7.2 so only the integral part is the number of images number of images is integral part that is the only decimal ke pehle ka part integral part which we call m integral part m so if you know this table you can solve these type of questions so let us take first case 35 degree first thing what i will do is i'll find n n will be what 360 upon 35 in 35 our table it is tens are 350 so what is left n is left now it is not divisible so i will put a decimal zero and now it will be either twos or threes are twos are 70 and then something so clearly the first case 35 degree is decimal wala. so in that case number of images will be number of images will be 10 only the integral part so this first case is based on this particular set, uh, case the first example is based on the third case question number two that is the b second case if theta is 36 degree find n what is n 360 divided by 36 that is 10 this is even what to do when it is even simply minus 1 place object anywhere so number of images will be number of images 9 like answer 10 second answer is 9 third question 40 degree c theta is equal to 40 n is equal to 360 upon 40 that is 9 it is an odd number odd clear there are two possibilities Either object is on angle bisector, so a minus karna hai if angle if the object is off angle bisector asymmetrically, number of images will be n. N is 9, which is odd number. So number of images kitnaengi number of images will be a minus that is 8 or number of images kitnaengi 9 9 ka off angle bisector. And if the object is on angle bisector, you will get 8 images. 8 and 9, these are two possibilities. And the last case, B is for 45 degree. For that, what is theta? 360 by 45. If you divide 45, 2 is a 90. And 94 is a 360. That is 8 is a 360. If you divide it properly, you will get 8. Which is even number. What we do in case of even number? Even number, ke liye anywhere object is placed number of images will always be less than 1 so number of images answer is 7 so this is based on ye teen cases hai. this is based on case number 1 this second example is based on case number 
one again sorry this is based on case number three decimal wala case this is based on case number one that is even this one is based on case number two and again the last one is based on case number one so this is the solution for question number two how to deal with this how to solve this how to derive this particular things that will be covered or that is already covered in the theory lectures So question number three: A rectangular sheet of length thirty centimeters and breadth three centimeters is kept on the principal axis of a concave mirror of a focal length thirty centimeters. Draw the image formed by the mirror on the same diagram as far as possible on scale. Now to solve this question, first you you need to understand how the images are formed when you place object in front of a concave mirror. So let us consider this is a concave mirror. And this is principal axis. Let us say this is focus, and twice the focal length. There is a center of curvature C. So, if I start from infinity, if I place a very tiny object at infinity, infinite is a very large distance, practically very large as compared to the focus or the radius of curvature. If I place object at a very large distance, all the rays coming will come parallel. all the rays that are coming towards the mirror are parallel and after reflection they will form the image at focus so if the object is at infinity if the object is at infinity the image that you get image this is object object the image that you get is at the focus so this is image which is a very tiny object at focus it is a point object as you start the journey of the object towards the mirror you will find that as you start the journey of the object towards the mirror as you approach the mirror when you will reach center of curvature you will find that the image will start its journey away from the mirror and when you will reach center of curvature when you will reach exactly center of curvature at that time the image will also come at the center of curvature and both of them will have same size size of object and size of image will be same so as the object start its journey from infinity as the object starts its journey from infinity to the center of curvature the image starts its journey from focus focus to center of curvature during this process object ka size and image ka size image is always less the size of image is always less than the object so image will be diminished in this process you will find that as the object starts traveling towards the center of curvature this is object right you are bringing object closer and closer and closer the image will grow in size very slowly it will grow in size very slowly so actually this won't be a straight line it will be a curve it will be a curve in this it will grow in size very very slowly now further if you continue the journey of the object object keeps on moving if you keep on moving the object towards the mirror what you will find is object if you keep on moving further towards the mirror and when you will reach the focus when the object when the tiny object is placed at the focus its image will form at infinity means basically what is going to happen is this image size will further grow as you bring the object closer and closer the image size will keep on growing and and what you will observe is what you will observe is the image size is increasing 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 and it will go up to infinity so this is very clear as object we as you bring the object from infinity to the center the image starts from focus and goes up to center further journey if you continue the journey towards the focus the image size will grow on increasing and it will go up to infinity what happens beyond the focus that is different story not required in this question so in this particular question what is asked a rectangular sheet of length 30 cm and breadth 3 cm is kept on the principal axis of a concave mirror now where exactly it is placed is not mentioned in the question but just to match the answers that those are given in the question uh we have to place the sheet in this way the rectangular sheet which is 
of length 30 cm and breadth 3 cm is kept such that the center of curvature will become the center of that sheet. So if the length is 30, 15 cm sheet will be over here and 15 cm ka sheet will be over here. So this will be that sheet. This will be that rectangular sheet, green color. This is that rectangular sheet. The focal length, the length, focal length is 30 centimeters. So C will be obviously at 60 centimeters. And what we are going to do is, we want to plot the image of this green sheet. Is basically, question is, if I place all the images, all the objects at these locations, means if I form a sheet, how will its image form? So we clearly know this thing. If the object is beyond beyond the C, the image will form between F and C, which will be diminished. Let us say, let us say, if the object is at this location, which is beyond C, its image is going to form at this location. Let us take example. Image is going to form somewhere over here, which will be diminished as compared to the object. Because left side wala object, the image forms on the right side. Beyond C wala object forms image between C and F. And if you if I start plotting images of all the objects which are between, sabke images if I start plotting, what I will get? As I will approach towards C, the images will be this. This will be the images. I will reach C. So iska size 3 cm as it is given. This will also be 3 cm. But this will be, this will be less than 3 cm. And further, if I keep the journey towards the focus, the image ka size will grow or increase. It will keep on increasing. It will grow till, let us say, this point. So, image of the rectangular sheet will appear somewhat in this way. Somewhat in this way it will appear. This is the rectangular sheet ka image. This is that image. In this question, what we are interested is that how will be the shape of that image? This is the shape, yes. What will be the size of this end and this end? Obviously, this part will be the curved part. This will be the straight line. So what will be the size of this? And what will be the size of this particular section? This particular part. So let us name this part, this sheet P, Q, R, S. So the sheet is P, Q, R, S. And P, Q ka image will be over here, which will be P dash, Q dash. And S R P Q R S R S ka image will be over here, which will be S dash R dash. We are interested in finding the size of P dash Q dash, that is the image of P Q and R dash S dash, which is the image of S R. So for that we need to use mirror equation. So using mirror equation, everyone knows the mirror equation. It is 1 by f is 1 by u plus 1 by v or 1 by v plus 1 by u. If I use the mirror equation for the first object that is pq, can you tell me what is the location of pq? pq ka location? What is the pq ka location? Yes, pq is c center ke aage 15 centimeters because total length is 30. So this is 15 centimeters beyond c. c already 60 pe hai. 60 plus 15 is 75. So PQ is at distance 75. So if I use for PQ, for PQ, 1 by minus 30, focal length is minus 30, because left side time dimensions, you have to use sign dimensions, is 1 by minus 75 plus 1 by V. If you solve it properly, 1 by V is 1 by 75 minus 1 by 30, and on solving it, you will get V equals to 50. V equals to 50 centimeters, which will be negative minus 50. Minus 50 indicates, minus 50 indicates on the same side image is formed. So this P dash Q dash, jo image hai P dash Q dash. Where is that image formed? This image is formed at 50 centimeters to the left. Uska size, what will be its size? So size, you can use this thing, height of image upon height of object is distance of image upon distance of object all in magnitude what is height of object object ka height is 3 centimeters height of image we have to calculate what is the distance of 
ऑब्जेक्ट ऑब्जेक्ट कितने डिस्टेंस पे है इट इज एट सेवेंटी फाइव वेर इज द इमेज इमेज इज एट फिफ्टी सॉल्विंग दिस ट्वेंटी गेट हाइट ऑफ इमेज एज टू सेंटीमीटर सो क्लियरली पी डैश क्यू डैश जो तीन सेंटीमीटर का है पी डैश क्यू डैश उसका इमेज पी डैश सॉरी पी क्यू विच इज थ्री सेंटीमीटर पी क्यू ऑब्जेक्ट का साइज तीन सेंटीमीटर उसका इमेज पी डैश क्यू डैश इज ओनली टू सेंटीमीटर विच इज ओवर हियर कितने डिस्टेंस में फिफ्टी पी डैश क्यू डैश सिमिलरली आर डैश एस डैश इसका साइज निकालना है सो एस आर एंड एस डैश आर डैश दिस इज ऑब्जेक्ट दिस इज इमेज सो फॉर आर एस वन बाय एफ इज वन बाय वी प्लस वन बाय यू वन बाय माइनस थर्टी इज इक्वल टू वन बाय वी प्लस वॉट इज द लोकेशन ऑफ एस आर वॉट इज द लोकेशन ऑफ एस आर दिस एस आर इज बिटवीन एफ एंड सी एक्सैक्टली ये थर्टी सेंटीमीटर ये फिफ्टीन है सो इट विल बी थर्टी प्लस फिफ्टी फोर्टी फाइव सो इफ आई यूज वन बाय साइन कन्वेंशन माइनस फोर्टी फाइव और ये सॉल्व किया अगर वन बाय वी इज वन बाय फोर्टी फाइव माइनस वन बाय थर्टी सॉल्व किया एलसीएम इज नाइनटी दिस विल रिक्वायर टू दिस विल रिक्वायर थ्री टू माइनस थ्री इज वन माइनस वन सो आंसर कम्स आउट टू बी वी इज इक्वल टू माइनस नाइनटी इसका मीनिंग है एस डैश आर डैश जो है इमेज इज एट लोकेशन एस डैश आर डैश इज एट लोकेशन नाइनटी सेंटीमीटर्स नाइनटी सेंटीमीटर्स सो वॉट विल बी द हाइट ऑफ दैट एस डैश आर डैश अगेन आई आई नीड टू यूज दिस फॉर्मूला हाइट ऑफ इमेज हाइट ऑफ इमेज अपॉन हाइट ऑफ ऑब्जेक्ट इज इमेज डिस्टेंस अपॉन ऑब्जेक्ट डिस्टेंस ऑब्जेक्ट इज एस आर उसका साइज है थ्री हाइट ऑफ इमेज वी डोंट नो इमेज का डिस्टेंस इज नाइंटी नाइंटी में बना है वो इमेज एंड ऑब्जेक्ट का डिस्टेंस इज फोर्टी फाइव एस आर इज एट फोर्टी फाइव सो क्लियरली दिस विल गिव यू टू टाइम्स द हाइट ऑफ ऑब्जेक्ट so height of image will be सिक्स सेंटीमीटर्स सो दिस विल बी सिक्स सेंटीमीटर्स दिस विल बी टू सेंटीमीटर्स एंड दिस विल बी अ कर्व दिस इज हाउ द इमेज ऑफ द इमेज ऑफ दिस रेक्टेंगुलर शेप इज गोइंग टू फॉर्म इट वॉन्ट बी रेक्टेंगुलर द शेप इज दिस इन दिस वे सो दिस इज द सोल्यूशन फॉर क्वेश्चन नंबर थ्री सो द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज द फोर्थ वन A car uses convex mirror of curvature 1.2 meters as its rear view mirror. A minibus of minibus of cross section 2.2 meter cross 2.2 meter is 6.6 meters away from the mirror. Estimate the image size. So, in the rear view mirror uh, of vehicles, generally convex mirrors are used. And suppose if the, this convex mirror This convex mirror and its radius of curvature r is 1.2 meters. This is principal axis. And from this convex mirror, at distance of 6.6 meters, at distance of 6.6 meters, there is a minibus whose cross section is 2.2 cross 2.2. So it is in this way, a square 2.2 cross 2.2. That is the front. Of a minibus cross section 2.2 cross 2.2. Now from this side, from this angle, from this view, you can only see the vertical side. So that minibus can be represented in this way. This is that minibus, and its size is 2.2 meter. There will be a depth of 2.2 meter, 2.2 cross 2.2. So we can only see this side of the minibus right now in this figure. So the question is, what will be the image size? We know the image location. This is image location that is u we know u is six point six. What will be b? It is very simple question we can use straight away. Mirror equation one by f is one by v plus one by u. For convex mirror, for convex mirror, radius of curvature is positive. It is on the right side. So focal length is plus one point two meters means one twenty centimeters. One point two meters is one twenty centimeters and focal length. Is radius of curvature by two that will be sixty centimeters. So f is one by sixty positive since it is a convex mirror. Radius of curvature is positive as well as focal length is positive. So one by sixty is equal to one by v that is the image position which we don't know right now plus 
object position. Object is at 6.6 meters. 6.6 meters is 660 centimeters. So 1 upon 660, but it will be negative because it is on the left side. After solving this equation, 1 by v will be 1 by 660. This will become positive if it comes on the left side, plus 60. To solve this LCM is 660, obviously, I need to multiply it with 11. So 11 in numerator, 11 in denominator, this will become 660. Denominator is same, 660. Upon this is 11 plus 1, 12 is 1 by v. So we get image position as 660 centimeters by 12. This is where the minibus ka image is going to form. But we are not interested where the image is going to form. We are interested in the image size. You know that height of image upon height of object is image location, image position upon object position. That is equal to height of image. We don't know. But height of object, we know it is 2.2 meters. Meters is equal to image. A location we have calculated. It is 660 by 12 centimeters divided by object a location was already given 6.6 meters which is 660 centimeters 660 centimeters so 660 centimeters 660 centimeters will cancel height of image will be 2.2 will go up 2.2 upon 12 meter so unit will remain same if it goes up and if i divide this it comes out to be 0. Point ones are 12 10 is left 8 is a 96 8 is a 96 4 is left and then 3 is a 36 meter so from this view the image will be 0 0.183 meters which can be approximated to 0 0.2 meter so the image will appear a, a square whose side is 0 0.2 meter cross 0 0.2 meter. This will be the image of the bus. So actual bus is 2.2 meter cross 2.2 but in the mirror when you are observing it, it will appear a very small image of 0 0.2 meter cross 0 0.2. Because we know that in convex mirror always the image is always diminished and we got the answer which is diminished image 0 0.2 meter cross 0 0.2 meter. The exact answer is 0.183 meter cross 0.183 meter. So this is the answer for question number four. Next question is fifth one. And the question is a glass slab of thickness 2.5 centimeters having refractive index 5 by 3 is kept on an ink spot. So that is considered this ink spot. And on this ink spot, a glass slab is placed. So this is a glass slab placed on ink spot. Now the thickness of this glass slab is given. The thickness is given 2.5 centimeters and the refractive index is also given refractive index is 5 by 3. Further, a transparent beaker of very thin bottom containing water of refractive index 4 by 3 up to 8 centimeter is kept on the glass block. On this glass block, a vessel is placed, a beaker is placed whose thickness is negligible in which there is water filled up to 8 centimeters. So water is filled into it. This is water filled in the beaker and it is filled up to 8 centimeters. 8 centimeters and refractive index of water is 4 by 3. Question is calculate apparent depth of the ink spot when seen from the air from the top. If you see this ink spot, the true depth, the true depth is 8 plus 2.5 is 10.5. But apparently, when you will observe it from the top, it will appear slightly elevated. So what is the apparent depth? That is the question. So for that, you must know this basic thing. That if this is a medium of refractive index N and thickness B, and if there is any object placed beneath it, any object placed beneath it, then by observing from the top, this object appears. So apparent depth is the true depth divided by the refractive index, which is n in this case. This is the formula, which is covered in the theory lectures. So how to derive this relation? That the apparent depth, apparent depth, this green dot will appear slightly raised. At what depth it will appear? The apparent depth is given as the true depth 
divided by the refractor index. But problem over here is there are two different media. And whenever there are two different media, the formula becomes true depth is equal to, sorry, sorry, apparent depth is equal to true depth in first medium upon refractive index of first medium plus true depth of the second medium upon refractive index of the second medium and so on if there are n number of media. So in this case there are two different media. So first one, the depth of the first media is 2.5 divided by refractive index is 5 by 3 plus second case ka depth is 8 and the refractive index is 4 by 3. So if you solve this 5, 0 0.5 and if 3 goes up 0 0.5 into 3 is 1.5 plus this 4, 2 is 8, 3 goes up it becomes 6. So the answer is 7.5 centimeters. This is the depth, apparent depth of this ink spot when observed from the top. So the answer is 7.5 centimeters. So question number six, a convex lens held some distance above a six centimeter long pencil produces image of some size. On shifting the lens by distance equal to its focal length, it again produces the image of same size. So image is produced same size two times. So we will see how convex lens forms the image first. Suppose this is convex lens, if you start with the object at infinity, if the object is placed at infinity, where its image will form, the image will basically form at focus. And as you will start the journey of the object towards the lens, the image will start to grow in size and it will go up to infinity. It will approach infinity as you come from infinity to focus. Infinity to focus as your journey goes, the image goes from focus to infinity. This is how it works. But when you are at 2f, the image is also at 2f. And the size of object and image is exactly equal. The size of object and the size of image is same when you are at 2f. When you are at infinity, the size of object is 0. But as you start traveling towards the lens, the size of object starts to increase but in this process it is diminished when you reach 2f the image reach 2f and then the journey from 2f to f 2f say f tak as you further keep on pushing it the image will grow in size and in this case you will get magnified so magnified diminished and equal size there are three possibilities journey from infinity to f so there are no two locations of objects where you will get two same size of images. All the images are of different size. So if you want two images of same size, they cannot be the locations in this case. So answer for this question, you must understand that if you want to find image of same size, then object must be once placed beyond the focus and then its image will be somewhere over here. And then it should be placed within the focus so that its image will be of same size but this time it will be virtual in the first case it was real so this is first thing that you must know to solve this question right okay so as we know that if you want two same size images once the object should be placed once the object should be placed beyond the focus at distance u1 let us say and then it should be placed inside the focus at distance u2 let us say so that at these two locations yes same size image is possible but in the question it is given on shifting the lens the lens is shifted by distance equal to focal length so this distance is basically equal to the focal length itself the distance by which the lens was shifted means the question is in this way let us say this is 6 centimeter pencil and it is placed at certain distance from a convex lens let us say focus of the lens is over here so the pencil is placed beyond the focus now the lens is shifted now when you shift the lens we can say that pencil is shifted now the pencil comes within the focus and these two locations are u1 and u2 and the images at these two locations are of same size. 
it again produces the image of same size. So in the first case, pencil ka image, and in second case, pencil ka image, both image are of same size. So for that, if the image is of same size, we can say magnification is same in both the processes. First case, what is magnification in first case? In first case, if I use lens formula, one by f is one by b minus one by u. Using sign conventions, u is negative, right? So this will become positive, and v is positive because since the object is placed beyond the focus, the image will form on the other side. So v will be positive, u will be negative, so that it becomes positive. Focus is always positive for convex lenses. Since the distance is u one, this is what we get. And to find magnification, to find magnification, I'll multiply both sides. By u1, so it will become u1 by v plus one is u1 by f. So u1 by f minus one is u1 by v. And if I take reciprocals, v by u1 will be cross multiplying this. You get f upon u1 minus f. This is what we get the magnification in the first case. Magnification and linear magnification. That the that is the size of image upon size of object is distance of image upon distance of object. This is in the first case when the object was over here. Now, when you shift the lens by focal length, means basically the pencil moves towards the lens by focal length. What will happen? See, if it comes within the focus now. Now, if I use lens formula, one by v minus one by u. U is negative, v is negative. Both are negative because the image will form on the same side. And now, in this expression, I need to put u two because the distance is. U. If I multiply the equation throughout by u two, it will become u two by f is equal to u two by v negative plus one, right? So u two by v, if it comes on left side, it will be one minus u two by f, and on cross multiplying and solving, v by u two equals to reciprocal I have taken, it will be f divided by f minus u two. This is magnification in the second case. And magnification in case one and magnification in case two, both should be same value-wise because the image is of same size. So equating their RHS, equating their RHS, what do we get? Suppose if I equate their RHS, f upon u1 minus f is equal to f upon f minus u. F and f are equal, so denominator should also be same. That is u1 minus f should be f minus u2, right? And taking u all the terms on the left side, u1 plus u2 will be 2f. This is the equation that we get between u1 and u2. But we also know that u1 minus u2 is what is the focal length f. u1 minus u2 is focal length f. And from this equation number one and two, solving these two equations, I will get the value of u1 and u2. What is the value of u1 if I add both the equations? U two U two will cancel. This will become three F equals to two U one. Hence U one equals to three by two F. So now we got that U one, that is the original position of the object was three by two F. Original position of the object was three by two F. So what will be the size of image? What will be the size of image? Let us first find the magnification. We have calculated u1. So if I replace u1 over here, what magnification I'll get? Magnification will be f divided by 3 by 2f minus f. 3 by 2f minus f. That is f upon half f. F and f will cancel. Magnification will be basically 2. So magnification is equal to 2. I'll get magnification is 2. And if magnification is 2, we know that it is size of It is height of image upon height of object is two. Height of object is already given. Six centimeter is the size of the pencil, so the height of image will appear as twelve centimeters. This is the answer for question number six. Okay, so the next question. Let's have a look at the question. The figure below shows section A B C D. A B C D. There is a tiny green led at the bottom left corner b 
So this point, there is a tiny LED. Certain ray of light from B suffers total internal reflection to the nearest point P. Now this statement is very important. This particular part of the statement is very important. See, the LED is placed at this corner and as the light will start traveling in the glass, as the light is traveling from glass to air, it will suffer refraction and it will bend away from normal. It will bend away from normal. So, as the ray is traveling, it will go away from normal. If the incidence is over here, it will go away from normal. So, as you travel, this is that nearest point from A to D. This is the nearest point where the ray is suffering total internal reflection. So, we can say that this angle should be Critical angle, almost critical angle. Critical angle is a thoda sa zara, but we can almost treat it as critical angle because this ke just pehle jo angle hoga, usme the ray the ray will suffer angle of refraction of 90 degree. That is critical angle, and just before, just beyond critical angle, the light will totally internal reflect in this way. So this point is the nearest point. Yes, statement. Make sure that this angle is critical angle. On surface AD, AD phase point pe, it will suffer total internal reflection and then hit the surface CD at point Q. The distances are given. This is 4, this is 6 and this is 3. So obviously PD will be 2. 6 minus 4. Now the question is, determine the refractive index. So from the geometry, this is 3, this is 4, 3, 4, Pythagoras triplet, this side will be 5. 3, 4, 5. And if this is critical, if this is angle, critical angle, this is critical angle, alternate angles. And from this figure, we know that refractive index of a material is 1 upon sine of that critical angle. 1 upon sine IC. And from this figure, 1 upon sine IC will be equal to 1 upon, what is sine IC? Opposite side, opposite side upon the hypotenuse, which is 5. This is Pythagoras triplet, 3, 4 and 5. And therefore, it will be 5 by 4. This is the answer for refractive index of the medium. Second thing is, determine the refractive index, distance BQ. Second thing is distance BQ. Now, if you consider a triangle, 3, 4 and 5, we have previously seen this part, this particular part in question number 1 of this topic. That if this is 3, 4 and this is 5, this is right angle triangle, then side opposite to 3, the angle is 37 and opposite to 4, the angle is 53. So in this figure, this angle, critical angle will be what? 4, opposite to 4 to 53 degree here or opposite to 3, this angle will be 37. Now the question is, what is distance BQ? If this is 37, this is 53, so this will be 53 and if this is 53, this angle, angle of incidence is equal to angle of repl reflection, 53. So if this is 53, this will be 37. And now we know the side, adjacent side is 2. We want opposite side. So I need to use which ratio? Opposite we want. Adjacent we have. I will go with tan theta. What is tan 37? Tan 37 will be opposite side BQ upon adjacent side PD, which is 2. Adjacent side is PD, which is 2. But we know that tan 37 from this triangle is 3 by 4. And solving this, you will get dq distance is equal to 3 by 2, that is 1.5 centimeters. All the distances are in centimeters. So distance dq will also be in centimeters. And the last question is whether pq ray, this pq ray, which is traveling from glass towards air, whether it will suffer partial or total internal reflection. For that, we need to check uska angle of incidence. Kitna. What is the angle of incidence? See, this is normal. This is 37, so this angle will be... 53 and this is 53 so this angle will be 37 and clearly the angle of incidence for ray pq angle of incidence kitna hai angle of incidence is 37 degree and 37 degree is less than critical angle because critical angle to 53 hai. so critical angle is less angle of incidence rahega, then the ray will go in the second medium that means the reflection won't be total internal it will be Partial reflection. So these are the answers for question number 7. Okay, so the next question is, a point object kept 10 centimeters away from one of the surface of a thick double convex lens. 
Now the question is on thick double convex lens. In our syllabus, in Maharashtra State Board syllabus, we don't have the formula of focal length for thick lens. We have the formula for thin lens. But the question is for thick double lens of refractive index 1.5 and radius of curvature 10 cm and 8 cm. The central thickness is 2 and determine the location of the final image considering the paraxial rays only. So in this case, as we don't have the direct formula, we need to derive the formula or else we will solve it one surface by other surface. Means one by one surfaces means we already know that if there is a single curved surface of radius r, of refractive index mu2 and the first refractive index is mu1 and if the object is placed at distance u then because of this curved surface its image one ray will go straight without any deviation it will go straight the other ray will bend towards the normal and the final image will form over here this distance is v and as we know that the relation between u v this is refraction due to single curved surface the formula is mu2 by v minus mu1 by u is mu2 minus mu1 by r so now let us see the refraction because of the first surface which is of radius 10 centimeters 10 centimeter repeller radius right? and the object is placed 10 centimeters away ye refractive index air hai aur ye hai glass 1.5 so let us put the data for single curved surface first we will find image kahan pe bana hai let us say this is image i dash the final image nahi hai this is the image only because of the first curved surface right so let us put the values mu2 the second refractive index is 1.5 by the image distance which we don't know let us call it as v dash as the image is i dash the distance is v dash minus 1 by the object distance is 10 centimeters which is negative 10 because it is on the left side sign conventions use karne hai. by minus 10 is mu2 minus mu1 which is 0 0.5 1.5 minus 1 upon radius of curvature 10 but it is positive because the curve is in this way the radius will be on the right side by 10 right so 1.5 by v dash plus 1 by 10 is equal to 1 by 20. 0 0.5 by 10 is 1 by 20. Now if I take this term to right hand side, it will become 1 by 20 minus 1 by 10 is 1.5 by v dash and 1.5 by v dash will be equal to if I multiply by 2 this will become minus 1 by 20. Solving this, V dash will be equal to minus 30 centimeters. V dash will be equal to minus 30 centimeters. So the intermediate image is at minus 30 centimeters and the intermediate image, this intermediate image is in medium 2. Now, if I place another curved surface, over here such that this distance becomes 2 centimeters then this curved surface whose radius of curvature is given radius of curvature is given 8 centimeters 8 centimeters because of this curved surface this intermediate image will act as object this intermediate image will act as object and now we want to find where the final image is going to form right where the final image is going to form. Since we have got a negative answer, negative value of V dash means the image is actually intermediate image is on the left side whose distance is 30. And for from this green surface, which is the second curved surface, what will be the distance of that intermediate image? It will be 32. So once again, I need to use single curved surface refraction for this green surface now. And the formula says that it is the refractive index in which the final image is going to form final image is going to form in air so air the refractive index upon final image ka distance obviously from this green surface that is the second curved surface is called distance minus mu1 in which the object is formed now what is the object object is this intermediate image previous wale ka jo image hai, that is the object now it is in which medium it is in glass 1.5 
by what is the distance of that from this red surface it is minus 30 from this green surface it will be minus 30 minus 2 that is minus 32 it will be minus 32 is equal to mu 2 minus mu 1 order remains same Yaha pe 1 minus 0 1 minus 1.5 1 minus 1.5 divided by the radius of curvature of this green surface which is 8 but since it is on the left side it will be minus 8 now we have to solve this to get the value of v so 1 by v plus plus 1.5 by 32 is 1 minus 0 point 1 minus 1.5 kitna aata hai minus 0 0.5 by minus 8 minus minus cancel over 0.5 by 8 is 1 by 16 and 1 by 16 can be written as 2 by 32 because LCM 32 32 has same denominator if 1.5 other term goes to right side 1 by V will be 2 by 32 minus 1.5 by 32 that is 0 0.5 by 32 that is 1 by 0 0.5 is 1 by 2 1 by 64 so 1 by V is 1 by 64 so answer is V is equal to 64 centimeters V is equal to 64 centimeters textbook may answer have 4 centimeters which is wrong textbook answer is 4 centimeters and if you follow the same steps textbook ka answer kahan se milega textbook ka answer agar 4 cm hai to unko ye mila hai by considering by not considering this minus sign if you consider plus sign over here which is not correct way actually it should be minus because u is the object distance which is negative right it should be minus 10 okay object distance should be minus 10 but textbook answer agar chahiye 4 cm if you want to bring you need to put plus sign over here so wahan pe jaake add hoga add hone ke baad if you solve it properly you will get 4 which is wrong because they have made the mistake in this particular step but actual answer should be 64 centimeters okay so the next question is question number 9 a monochromatic ray of light is incident at 37 degree on an equilateral prism of refractive index 3 by 2 determine angle of emergence and angle of deviation that is the first question we will find what is value of e that is angle of emergence and angle of deviation delta now see to solve this question first of all we must understand that we cannot use the prism formula the prism formula is refractive index of prism is sine of a plus delta m by 2 upon sine of a by 2 because we don't know whether the angle of incidence is such that the deviation will be minimum so you cannot use this formula to, to get the minimum deviation because the deviation could be anything so we need to use the normal Snell's normal Snell's law so if this is right this is equilateral prism equilateral prism for which angle of prism is 60 degree this is normal light is incident at an angle of 37 degree angle of incidence is 37 so the ray will bend towards normal and this will be first a refraction and this is second normal this will be second refraction and we know that r1 plus r2 is equal to angle of incidence this is what we have proved in the derivation that r1 plus r2 should be angle of prism so to find this r1 we will use snell's law and according to snell's law sine of angle of incidence upon sine of angle of refraction first is equal to refractive index of the medium 3 by 2 and as we know that now that 37 degree is a standard right angle triangle 37 53 90 side opposite to 37 is 3 this is 4 and this is 5 so what will be sine 37 it will be 3 by 5 so sine 37 is 3 upon 5 sine 37 ka value 3 and 3 will cancel cross multiplying 2 by 5 will be sine of angle of refraction r1 so taking sine on this side angle of diffraction r1 will be sine inverse of 2 by 5 which is 0 0.4 and i have already calculated the value sine of 0 0.4 in log table if you find its value it comes out to be 23.6 degrees right so as angle of refraction r1 is 26 23.6 degree 23.6 degree plus r2 is 60 degree because angle of prism is 60 degrees 23.6 plus r2 is 60 solving this you will get the second refraction angle as 36.4 degrees 
this is the second refraction and from here the light will emerge out and again I need to use Snell's law over here if I use Snell's law once again over here if I use Snell's law over here see what will happen sign of angle of incidence upon sign of angle of refraction which is angle of emergence will be refractive index of air with respect to glass that is refractive index of air with respect to glass glass ka refractive index is 3 by 2 will go up so solving this sign of what is the value of r2 that is 36.4 we have already calculated the value sign of 36.4 comes out to be 0 0.59 upon sine e equals to 2 by 3 so cross multiplying sine e will be 0 0.59 into 3 by 2 cross multiply agar kiya so it comes out to be 1.77 upon 2 that is 0 0.885 and if sine of e is 0 0.885 taking inverse I have already calculated the value angle of emergence comes out to be 62.5 degree this is the correct answer angle of emergence is 62.5 degrees and how to find angle of deviation then for that I can use this formula a plus delta is I plus E angle of prism plus angle of deviation is angle of incidence plus angle of emergence just put the values angle of prism is 60 degree angle of deviation we don't know angle of incidence is 37 degree plus angle of sorry angle of incidence is 37 degree angle of emergence is 62.5 this comes out to be 99.5 is 60 plus delta so delta comes out to be 39.5 degree this is the answer for delta this is the answer for p this is the first part of the question determine angle of emergence and angle of deviation okay so the second part of this question is we have already solved the first part for e and delta now if angle of prism is adjustable means now this is not equilateral prism we can adjust that angle of prism then for what value of angle of prism the emergent ray just it is just possible the emergent ray is just possible for the same angle of incidence means emergent ray will just come out it won't get total internal reflect it will just come out for just come out if the emergent ray just comes out we can assume that that the emergent ray almost grazes the surface means angle of emergence is 90 degree for the same angle of incidence if the same angle of incidence is kept angle of incidence we know that it is 37 degree so the ray will be refracted first time r1 and this will be r2 right so if this is r1 this is r2 this is angle of incidence the emergent ray just comes out means the angle of emergence will be 90 degree what should be the angle of prism we know that angle of prism is r1 plus r2 since the medium is same we have already calculated in the last first part of this question that what was angle of refraction r1 it was 23 Point 0.6 degrees plus what is the value of r2 now from this figure it is clearly the critical angle because if this is critical angle the ray will graze the surface so this is critical angle and how will you find critical angle of this medium to find critical angle sine ic is equal to 1 by refractive index and refractive index is given 3 by 2 so sine ic comes out to be 2 by 3 taking the inverse sin inverse of 2 by 3 will give you ic and sin inverse of 0 0.667 will be it comes out to be 41.8 degrees 41.8 degrees if i put that value over here 41.8 degree okay the addition comes out to be 64 65.4 degrees this is the angle of prism this should be the angle of prism for which the emergent ray will just come out so the answers for this question is angle of emergence for 62.5 we have already solved in the first part angle of refraction angle of deviation sorry angle of deviation is 39.5 degree and angle of prism in the third part of this question 
was 65.4 degree. These are the answers for the question. Okay, so the next question is for from the given data, determine angular dispersion by prism and dispersive power of material. So this question is straight away formula based question and in this question what is asked is what is the this is the original ray of light what is the angular dispersion angular dispersion means the angle between the extreme colors violet and red ke beech ka angle this angle is called as angular dispersion and angular dispersion can be calculated by bending that is the deviation of violet color minus the bending that is the deviation of red color this formula will give you the angular dispersion angular dispersion so first we will find angular dispersion and then we will go for dispersive power so angular dispersion is deviation of violet minus deviation of red out of which deviation of red is given but deviation of violet is not given so how do we find deviation of any color deviation of any color is angle of prism angle of prism times refractive index of that color minus 1 means if it is red then it will be red color ka refractive index minus 1 if it is violet then it will be a into violet color ka refractive index minus 1 but in this question red color's deviation is given and red color's refractive index is also given from that i can get angle of devi angle of prism from these two values i can get angle of prism let us put the values this is 3.1 equals to a into a into 1.62 minus 1 so a will be 3.1 divided by 1.62 minus 1 is 0 0.62 and if you solve it properly this will become if i multiply it by 10 it will become 31 by 6.2 and clearly 6.2 tens are 10 times it is 62 so 5 times it will be 31 so angle of prism comes out to be 5 degrees so what will be deviation of violet color if i put 5 over here it will be 5 times mu v minus 1 which is 1.66 minus 1 is 5 times 0 0.66 is 3.3 degree this is deviation of violet deviation of red is already given and the difference between the deviations that is 3.3 minus 3.1 is the angular dispersion that is 3.3 minus 3.1 that is 0 0.2 degrees this is the deviation this is the angular dispersion angular dispersion of light by the prism second thing is what is dispersive power now dispersive power is defined as angular dispersion means this number it is defined as angular dispersion which is the difference between the angle between two colors upon the deviation of the mean color mean color red with your may mean color yellow yellow is the mean color upon the deviation of mean color now see in dono may what is the angle 0 0.2 already calculate kiya 0 0.2 divided by mean color jo hai first color jo hai sabse zyada bending wala color is violet Violet color bend hua hai 3.3 degree se. Red color bend hua hai 3.1 degree se. In dono ka average color kitne se bend hoga? 3.2 se obviously. So it is 0 0.2 degree upon 3.2 degree. Unit will cancel and it can be written as 2 by 32. That is 1 by 16. Unit less. Now answer is 1 by 16. If you solve it properly, you will get 0 0.0. This is 9 is 96. Sorry. 0, 6 is 96 and then 4 is left roughly 2, 5, 0 0.6, 0 0.0625 the number is unitless because dispersive power is the ratio of angle to angle so no unit. So this is the answer for dispersive power and this is the answer for angular dispersion. Okay so the next question is question number 9. The refractive index of a flint glass varies from 1.60 to 1.66 for visible light so 1.6 to 1.66 is the refractive index for flint glass for different colors so we know that for violet color the refractive index is maximum so this will be the refractive index for violet and this will be the refractive index for red for red the refractive index is least and question is 
if the radius of curvature are given, calculate the chromatic aberration between two extreme colors. Now see, if this is lens, now what is the concept of chromatic aberration? If this is a thin lens, then if white light is incident, if white light is incident from this side, then we know that after passing through the lens, the first color that will converge, maximum refraction occurs for violet color. So violet color will converge at this point. So this will be basically the focal length for violet color. And the red color which bends the least will converge, let us say, at this point. So this will be the focal length for red color. And this is the difference between the focal lengths that is the point of conversion of these two colors. And that is what is asked. The chromatic aberration, that is the distance between these two colors. So let us use the lens formula. Lens makers equation. So lens makers equation is 1 by f. Lens makers equation is 1 by f. N minus 1, that is refractive index of the medium minus 1, times 1 by R1 minus 1 by R2. So we will use this formula for two different colors. First, I will use it for violet color. 1 upon 1.66. This is the refractive index for violet color. Sorry. 1 upon F violet is equal to 1.66 minus 1 times 1 upon R1. The first refractive index is, sorry, first radius of curvature is 10 minus the second radius of curvature is 15, but using sign conventions, it will become 1 upon minus 15. So, on solving this, 1 by Fv equals to, if you solve it, you will get 0 0.66, 1 by 10 plus 1 by 15, that is 0 0.66 times 15 and 10 ka LCM is 30, this requires 2, this requires 3, and this requires 2. So it is 5 by 30, 0 0.66 into 5 by 30 is 1 by 6, 1 by 6. It comes out to be 0 0.11. This is the focal, this is the reciprocal of focal length for violet color. So on taking the reciprocal, so Fv is equal to 1 upon 0 0.11, that is 100 over 11 centimeters. This is the focal length for violet color. Similarly, I can solve it for red as well. I will solve it for red over here. 1 upon focal length of red color will be n minus 1. It will be 1.60 minus 1. That is 0 0.6 times this factor basically will remain same, which is 1 by 6. We have already proved it. 1 by 6. So it comes out to be 1 by focal length of red as 0 0.1. So focal length of red will be 1 upon 0 0.1. That is 10 is 10, 1 upon 0 0.1 is 10 centimeters. So red color converges at 10 centimeters. Red color converges at 10 and violet color converges at 100 by 11 centimeters. So what will be this difference? It will be basically FR minus FV that is 10 minus 100 by 11 cross multiply on cross multiplying it is 110 minus 100 by 11. So the answer is chromatic aberration is 10 by 11 centimeters. This is the final answer for question number 9. So next question is question number 12. And in this question, uh, it is given that a person uses spectacles of number 2.00. Now basically what is number in a spectacle? It is basically the power of the lens. So a person uses a spectacle of lens whose power is 2 or reading. So from power we can get the focal length. Determine the range of magnifying power possible. Now clearly it is a very simple question. Magnifying power of a normal lens is asked. So for that, first what is given? Given is the power of lens which is 2.00, the unit is diopters. And if the power is 2D, we know that 1 upon F should be 2 because power is power of a lens is defined as 1 upon focal length. And therefore, focal length will be 1 upon 2. Diopters reciprocal is beta, which is equal to 50 centimeters. Because 1 upon 2 meter is 0.5 meter, and 0.5 meter is 50 centimeters. So as we have focal length now, what is the magnifying power of a simple microscope, of a simple 
microscope. For simple microscope, the magnifying power is given by D by F plus B by V, where V is the position of image. And since magnifying power's range is asked, means maximum and minimum value, so magnifying power is maximum when final image is at DDV. This is what we have already covered in the theory lectures. And magnifying power will be minimum when the final image is at infinity. So final image infinity if I put over here, magnifying power minimum kitna aega? D by F. Or maximum kitna aega? D by F plus ye to D ho jayega. Position is D. So D by D is 1. This is the maximum and minimum. And since F was given indirectly in terms of the power of the lens, if I substitute the values, D is the distance of distinct vision, normal eye ke liye, it is 25 centimeters. By focal length is 50, plus 1. So 25 by 50 is 1 by 2. 1 by 2 plus 1 is 3 by 2. 3 by 2 is 1.5. This is the magnifying power, a maximum value. And what is the minimum value? Minimum value will only be 25 by 50, only D by F, which is 0 0.5. So the range of magnifying power is from 0 0.5 to 1.5. Remember magnifying power is the ratio. It is the ratio of two angles. It is also called as angular magnification. And it is a unitless quantity as both the units will cancel out. So don't, no need to write any unit over here. 0 0.5 and 1.5 is the range. The range is from 0 0.5 to 1.5. So in the second part of the question, the lens is given as concave or convex of refractive index 10.5. Now there is a problem with this number 10.5. It is a misprint and the value should be 1.5 and not 10.5 because the refractive index 10.5 will become very large. 1.5 should be the refractive index. Having one of its curvature 10 centimeters, determine the other curvature. So first of all, you must know what is a concave or convex lens. If this is a concave or convex lens, then the first part is a concave, the other one is convex. So effectively the lens is convex lens. Convex lens means it is thick at the center and thin at the ends. And one of the part is concave. So this is a concave or convex lens. Clearly its focal length will be negative. On the left side the focus will be. So if I use the equation, lens maker's equation, 1 by f is, what is the formula for lens maker's equation? n minus 1, 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2. And from this figure, it is clearly visible that both the radii are negative. R1, R2 both are on the left side. So both are negative. So now I will put the values. Focal length in the first part we have calculated was 50. But since the focus is on the left side, it will be minus 1 by 50. Minus sign because the focus is on the left side is equal to n minus 1. n minus 1, refractive index is 1.5 minus 1, is 0 0.5. 1 bar. The first radius of curvature is 10 but it is on the left side, so minus 10, minus the second radius of curvature is also on the left side, so again minus R2. And now we will solve this expression. If 0 0.5 is multiplied in the bracket, what will happen, see? It will become minus 1 by 50 equals to 0 0.5 in the bracket, 0 0.5 by 10, negative, 0 0.5 by 10, negative, minus, this is minus, minus, plus, so plus 0.5 by R2, plus 0.5 by R2, and 0.5 is 1 over 2, so it will become 1 by 20, taking this 1 by 20 on LHS, it becomes 1 by 20 minus 1 by 50 is 0.5 by R2, cross multiply 50 minus 20 is 30 upon 1000 is 0 0.5 by R2, and cross multiplying this, if you cross multiply, 100 into 0.5 is 50 is equal to 3 R2. 3 is a divided kya to R2 is 50 by 3 centimeters. So this is the radius of curvature on the second curve. 50 by 3. This is the solution for question number 12. So the last question is question number 13. And in this question, the question is based on compound microscope in which focal power of eye lens. Now in compound microscope, this is the basic ray diagram for compound microscope. In compound microscope there are two lenses, the objective which is close to the object 
and this is the eyepiece lens which is close to the eye. Now, in compound microscope, object is placed over here which is beyond the focal length of the objective. First lens, objective lens will magnify the object. This image will be the real image. And then the second lens will further magnify it and this image will be the virtual image. See, these are basic terms. This is called as UO. UO is the object distance for the objective and ye AB ka image is A1, B1 which will be VO at distance VO. This is the focal length FO. So for objective lens, all the distances are written as UO, BO and FO. For eyepiece lens, this A1, B1 will act as the intermediate object. This will act as object for this lens. So uska distance will be UE. Uska final image ka distance will be VE. Final image is V. E stands for eyepiece and its focal length is FE. This is basic construction of compound microscope and the question is related to magnifying power of compound microscope. Magnifying power of compound microscope is basically the multiplication of two things. Pehle wale lens ka linear magnification, dusre wale lens ka angular magnification that is magnifying power of the second lens. Linear magnification of objective lens, first lens ka linear magnification, second lens ka that is eyepiece lens ka magnifying power matla, angular magnification and dono ke formula theory mein cover hua hai linear magnification of objective is linear magnification of objective will be object image size upon object size which will be image distance upon object distance which is v0 by u0 into magnifying power of the second lens ka simplified version is b distance of distant vision by fe plus d by ve now in this question if you read it carefully the focal power of eye lens is given 6 diopter so from that focal power is given from that i can find the focal length because it is the reciprocal so 1 upon power 1 by 6 meter mein aayega diopter ka reciprocal is meter converted into centimeters 100 by 6 centimeters then the microscope is to be used for maximum magnification the word maximum magnification is ka minimum value is 12.5 so magnification of this microscope should be maximum which is kam se kam value 12.5 maximum magnification is given so for maximum magnification the rule is this number should be maximum this number should be maximum now, how to increase this number d and t are constant fe constant hai lens ka but the only way of increasing this number is making it minimum means final image should be closest jitna kam utna achha. So VE, the distance VE should be as small as possible and the smallest distance which is by which you can see the object without any strain on the eye is nothing but DDV itself because agar isse bhi pass, if you bring it closer than DDV you will get a strain on the eye. So the smallest distance where the image should form is DDV. So when the final image is at DDV you get the maximum magnification. So for maximum magnification this will become D and therefore D and D will cancel it will become 1. So magnifying power ka maximum value will look in this way. Magnifying power maximum will be basically V0 by U0 first term as it is into D by Fe plus 1 because VE will become D. Okay, so we will start with the solution. See, what is given in the question? Focal power is given 6D from that I have converted into focal length. Length of microscope is given 25 centimeters. 25 centimeters the length of microscope now the length of microscope is basically the length between the two lenses eyepiece objective ke beach ka distance from this figure it is clearly v0 image ka distance plus ue ue matlab is lens se is image ka kitna distance ue plus v0 dono ka mod values ka addition is 25 so using lens formula for eyepiece or eye lens if I use the formula for eye lens what is the lens formula you know that lens formula is 1 upon Fe is 1 upon Ve minus 1 upon Ue out of that we know two values we know the focal length it is 100 by 6 centimeters we know the Ve which is DDV 25 centimeters we can find Ue from this let us put the values what will be 1 by Fe 6 by 100 that is 3 by 50 is the reciprocal 1 by 80 
is equal to 1 by what is VE? VE is 25 hai, 25 centimeters distance of distinct vision because maximum magnifying power chahi, minus 1 by UE. Now in this while you are substituting values you must make sure sign conventions you are putting right. So first we will check FE ka sign convention positive right because focal length is on the right side but VE is on the left side so I should put minus 25 as well as UE is also on the left side so plus 1 by UE ho jayega ye. and solving this if I bring this 1 by 25 other term on the left side 1 by UE will be equal to 3 by 50 3 by 50 plus 1 by 25 एक इतना आएगा अगर दो से मल्टीप्लाई किया एलसीएम 50 हो जाएगा 50 एंड दिस इज 5 सो यू विल गेट 1 बाय 10 1 अपॉन यूई सो यूई इक्वल्स टू 10 सेंटीमीटर यूई इक्वल्स टू 10 सेंटीमीटर ये 10 दिस इज 10 सेंटीमीटर टोटल माइक्रोस्कोप का लेंथ तो 25 है सो इफ दिस इज 10 दिस शुड बी 25 minus 10 दैट इज 15 सो यूजिंग दिस फार्मूला दैट लेंथ इज UE plus VO, I can get VO is equal to 15 centimeters because VO plus UE in ka addition 25 hai. So if this is 10, this should be 15. Now, once you get VO, I will use the lens formula for the second lens that is the objective lens. Let us use the formula for objective lens now. For objective lens, the formula will remain same 1 by FO is 1 by VO minus 1 by UO. Right, what is value of VO? We know value of VO is 15, but where the object is placed, we don't know. What is the value of FO? We don't know. So, directly using this equation will not give us the answer because there are two unknown terms. How to get one of that term using the maximum magnifying power of the condition? That is 12.5 equals to VO, which we have calculated 15 by UO which we don't know yet, divided by D by Fe. D is 25 by Fe is 100 by 6 will go up plus 1. That is equal to 12.5 is 15 by Ue, sorry Uo, Uo into, this will be 4 and 6 by 4 is 3 by 2. So 3 by 2 plus 1. 3 by 2 plus 1 is 5 by 2, right? This 5 by 2. And on cross multiplying this, if I multiply 2 into 12.5 is 25 is 15 into 5 by UO. So UO will be 15 into 5, that is 75 by 25, that is 3 centimeters. So we got UO by solving this magnifying power a condition, maximum magnifying power. That now I can use it over here because now we know we know we know the value of v naught and we know the value of u naught. So let us substitute one by f naught is equal to one by f naught is equal to one by v naught, which is one by fifteen plus or minus for this lens v naught is to the right, so plus fifteen minus one by u naught, but u naught is to the left, so minus. 1 by 3 because u naught is to the left side so I need to put negative sign so that minus minus will become plus make LCM same multiply by 5 multiply by 5 so denominator 15 upper 5 plus 1 6 is 1 by f naught so f naught 1 by f naught will get 6 upon 15 so what is the value of f naught f naught will be 15 by 6 centimeters but question may kusha hai what is the power of objective not the focal length of objective power of objective how to find power of objective power of any lens is the reciprocal of the focal length basically power of objective will be 1 upon focal length of objective what is the focal length of objective 15 by 15 by 6 but here centimeter mein hai. so into 10 raised to minus 2 into 10 raised to minus 2, ye 6 upar jayega, it will become 6, 10 raised to minus 2 upar jayega, 600 by 15 and 15 forza, so 40 diopter is the value of power of the objective lens. So this is the first part of the question, determine the minimum focal power of objective lens, the answer is 40 diopters. Now how to solve the second part, see, 
I will solve it over here. Once we have calculated that the focal length of the objective is 15 by 60, 15 by 6, 15 by 6 centimeters. Now you can find the radius of curvature using the lens Likers equation because the lens is by convex lens. See, if the lens is by convex lens of same radius of curvature R and R, what will be the formula? 1 by F equals to N minus 1, 1 by R. 1 minus 1 by r2. This is the formula. Right? So, what is refractive index? Refractive index of the lens is 1.5. So, 1.5 minus 1 into first radius jo hai ye wala. This is positive. So, 1 by r no problem. Minus this radius will be negative because left side go hai value. So, plus 1 by r equal be. So, that is equal to 1.5 minus 1 is 0.5. 1 plus 1, 2 by r is 1 by f. Therefore, 1 by r is 1 by f. So, r is equal to f. What is value of focal length? The value of focal length is 15 by 6 centimeters. On dividing 15 by 6, it is 2s are 12.5 centimeters. So, the radius of curvature is 2.5 centimeters and the power of objective lens is 40 diopters. These are the values for question number 13.